Hello, this is Will Stewart, the founder of GamersTube.co.uk, and I have here with me Michael Whitehead. Hi, I'm Michael, and I'm uh, one of the co-admins for GamersTube.co.uk. And here we'll be doing a review on Napoleon Total War, shortly released in the EU and, and America. So. Here we have the front uh, the front page, the menu. We have continue campaign, single player, where you have your load games, tutorials, Napoleon campaigns, Napoleon battles, campaign of the co coalition, and play battle. You also have multiplayer, which has Total War Online, local network, player stats. On Total War Online, you have your drop-in battles, where you can drop into your friends or some random person's campaign battle, the sea battle, land battle. You got the battle list of everyone who's playing on online. And you got the campaign, co-op campaign, one v one, or you could play co-oply in Egypt, Europe, and Italy. So then you've got your options, graphics, sound, controls, user interface. Okay, so this is Michael and uh, at the moment we're looking at the Napoleon's campaign section of uh, the single player experience in Napoleon. So you'll see on the left that we have uh, five sections. First one is the tutorial, uh, which I haven't played yet so I don't know what, what really goes on there. Um, but we do have Italy, Egypt, Europe, and finally Waterloo. Now, so far I've only completed the Italian campaign, and I've started the Egypt campaign, but I can quite safely say that both, they offer really varied gameplay, and it's basically it's a massive improvement on Empire. Um, as you probably know, each is set on a different map, so the Italian campaign focuses in on Northern Italy, um, in a period where Napoleon was making a name for himself as a general. Um, he started off as an, uh, uh, an artillery commander and um, he was given the orders to defend French territory in Northern Italy but ended up um, really wiping the Austrians out of Northern Italy and really um, gained himself a massive reputation. Um, looking on at Egypt, um, this was effectively when Napoleon really became a well-known guy in France. Um, the, the French went over to Egypt in search of wealth and also to piss off, piss off the British a bit. Um, Napoleon was very largely successful against the Mamluks, but had to return home, um, perform the coup d'etat, and became emperor. And one of the reasons he was so successful in Egypt is he utilised the square formation, which was very effective against um, Mamluk heavy cavalry charges. Finally, we look on at Europe, which is arguably um, the May Camp well, no, it is it is the May campaign of all of all the campaigns you can play on. And this is when you take command of Napoleon as uh, Emperor of all of France and essentially go around attempting to conquer Europe. Uh, I haven't I haven't got to Waterloo yet, but I would imagine that this is um, this is after Napoleon was exiled um, to a small island in the Mediterranean. Um, after he came back, I would imagine this is perhaps a little bit of campaign gameplay and then obviously the very famous Battle of, of Waterloo. Now the final thing I want to talk about is um, the options in the bottom right hand corner of the screen and it's a little button there called Enable Drop in Battle and um, uh, Will already mentioned it in the multiplayer section but this is arguably one of the, the biggest improvements on Empire in Napoleon and what this basically is is it allows you to play friends and other people who are online on the Total War Online um, instead of the AI in your campaign games and I've tried it already and it works really well, it's really cool uh, the only problem of course being is that you can occasionally come up against some absolute guru who destroys you and ruins your campaign but um, it's definitely it's much better than playing the AI which is, although it's been improved, still needs all the help it can get OK, so now to explain Waterloo uh, it was on the 18th of June, 1815, and yeah. it proved to be Napoleon's last action. The combined British, Hanoverian, Prussian and Dutch 
Bulgarian force of the 7th Coalition decisively defeated Napoleon and his royal and his loyal generals, ending the Emperor's rule forever and leading to his exile on the Atlantic island of St. Helena. It's a very interesting battle, but as the French it's very hard as the British and the Dutch have the farms, which proved to be very defensible. And if they have all their troops in the farms, then you're just going to get slaughtered trying to capture them. Also, the British have the high ground, with their artillery firing on your artillery, which shortly get destroyed. And it's a very interesting battle. I won't tell you any more, as just spoil the whole fun of it. So, here we have the Napoleon campaigns. Thank you for watching this bit. Okay, hello and welcome to the Napoleon's Battle section of the single player experience in Napoleon Total War. As you can see, we've got a range of single player battles which are available to play all over the uh, European campaign map. Um, first battle is the Battle of Lodi, which Will will now explain. Okay, so this is uh, Napoleon first made his name, and he beat the Austrians, and the nickname was the Little Corporal, and now we move on as he won the battle, and now we move on to the Battle, battle of Arcol. I think it's Arcol. Sounds yes. like Arcol. And he was outflanked by two armies of the Austrians, uh, one larger force de uh, moving in from the north, and then another force moving in who were defending a town on the right-hand side. And you had to split your forces, one to halt the advancing enemy, and one to go and take out the town or village. Then you have the Battle of the Pyramids, uh, where he deployed his lethal squares against the around the pyramids of Giza, defeating the fearless Mamluk cavalry force. Now you also unlock the Battle of the Nile, but you don't have to complete it to move on between the British and the French, with Horatio Nelson commanding one of the ships, unfortunately not the HMS Victory. Then we move on to Austerlitz, uh, one of the hardest battles in the Napoleon's battles, uh, the Russian and the Austrians on the hill, and you're at the bottom. Split your force into two to advance on the enemy. Now the battle for Russia, called the Battle of Bordinia, or something like that, on the 7th of September 1812. This is where his forces were close to close to feet uh, from the Russian defenders, and this is probably the one of the bloodiest battles in the Russian campaign for both sides. And now uh, the Battle of Dresden. And then finally moving on to Ligony. And then the battle that everyone wants to play, Waterloo, which has just been explained. And somewhere along the line you are on Trafalgar, which I'm sure most British people want to play. As everyone else wants to. And also in the background you can see all the territories of the 7th Coalition and, well not really the 7th Co Coalition because it goes in time order, and then you have France's territory. So thank you for watching Napoleon's Battles. Okay, so here we have the campaigns of the Coalition. You can play as Austria, Great Britain, Prussia and Russia. There are two types of game modes, historical and world domination. Uh, you have the options from Empire and what we've just explained, but also you've got the enable drop-in battles option. And then the gameplay options, which you have all know of in Empire. So Austrians having some of Italy, Northern Italy, and then their normal territory. England having Gibraltar and United Kingdom, Prussia having Germany, Russia having Russia. So this is the campaign of the coalition. Now we move on to 